Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm on my way out on an adventure. I brought my little esky with me, the thermos, cup of tea. So let's put that in the car. Camera bags. All right. I'm pretty sure I've got everything. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm working on a series of videos which are gonna be focusing on specifically on what to shoot in the night sky when there isn't actually any Milky Way core visible. Now, a few weeks ago, Alan Wallace had a fantastic video about this very topic and his title was Milky Way season is never over. And I love that video and I highly recommend that you go and have a look at Alan's channel. Uh, there's a lot of great material on there and I've mentioned him before. But anyway, tonight I'm heading out to a fantastic spot that I've been to, well, a couple of times before, but I've never shot there at this time of year. So we're, we're into the Australian summer. Milky Way core has gone down. Uh, it's over where the sun is now. And uh, this is the first of these videos that I'm putting together. So I think tonight we might just have a look and see what Orion is doing in the night sky. So let's get out there. Okay, well, here we are. Now you can see behind me this absolutely beautiful old brick ruin. Now I have photographed this before, but the sky was different last time I was here. And the whole purpose of this video is to come out here when there's no Milky Way core in the sky. So what I've done, I've lined up Orion behind the structure. And my intention tonight is to shoot a composition with this facing, uh, well, pretty much where we're seeing now, and with Orion above. And so I'm gonna use a couple of different techniques here. Firstly, I'm gonna line up my 20 mil F1.8, which I can get everything in. The other thing I might give a go, I'll just see how, how time is. I might get the tracker out and see if I can actually get a shot of Orion, maybe with perhaps, a, I don't know, a 50 millimeter focal length and do a bit of a focal length blend. Now, I know some of you guys are not into that. Fair enough, but it's something to try out uh, when you've got the opportunity. And this is a fantastic subject. And so, let's get into it. I've got to rush because the moon is coming up in about an hour's time. So I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time to get this done. So, let's get into it. Now, in case you're wondering, I actually know the owner of this property and I rang him today before I came out here to shoot. No worries, it wasn't a problem for him for me to be here, but because he only lives just down the road and it's pretty late at night, if he sees lights going on down here, he may think someone's trying to vandalize the place. So I think it's just a common courtesy to do that. And what I will do is print up uh, an image from the shoot here tonight and, and I'll deliver that to him and I'll probably give him a calendar for, for Christmas. And I do that with a lot of the people that I shoot on their property because I think it's just a courteous thing to do. It's, a, it's the very least thing that I can do actually. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm placing some Z96 video lights with the orange gels. As you can see, I've got one in my hand here. 
around the room. Now, you can see in the background, there's one in the fireplace down there. And the, the reason I put it down there is because that's a natural place for the glow to emanate from. There's actually another fireplace here. So I'm just gonna put this one down inside that fireplace, just on a reasonably low level, something like that. Because remember, often at the fairly high ISOs that we're operating on, we don't need very much. So in this occasion, I wanna warm this room up. And because it's got fairly light colored walls, uh, these lights, these glow and they look fantastic. All right, so as far as the settings for this shoot, what I did, I set my camera up here just on the other side of this fence, electric fence, by the way. So I had to jump around that, but it's pretty easy to go under. Anyway, I set my camera up here pretty high. And the reason I had it pretty high is because with the 20 millimeter focal length um, and using the straight lines of the building as a reference guide, uh, they tend to lean in a bit if I have the camera on a low angle. Now, if you've ever done real estate photography, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So even though 20 millimeters is not an ultra, ultra wide lens, it's still wide enough to get that wide angle distortion on the edges. So I put the house fairly close to the middle. And the reason I was able to get the camera up pretty high was because Orion up there behind isn't too high above. So I can actually get the whole scene in and still have the camera up high. The other thing is, I wanted to make sure I could get some of the roof line up there. Now I can't get it all because it's quite high and it's actually up on an elevated spot here. Um, but apart from that, I wanted to make sure I could get the chimney and all that sorts of thing. Now, what were my settings? So what I decided to do here was shoot, well, I actually shot a couple of single frames and I'll show you those, but they, they look pretty good, uh, just as single shots. But then I stacked, as I often do for noise reduction. So I shot 12, frames of just the sky with no light at all on here so it's focused to infinity i shot those at f 2.2 10 second shutter speed at iso 6400 now that's pretty standard for this setup and you'll see in most of my videos i use the same uh, settings for my uh, sky shots but sometimes it varies but with this 20 mil and the z6 that's what i shoot most of the time and the intention there is to stack those in sequator reduce the noise and get a much clearer background sky. Then I stopped down to F5, ISO 500, and I left the shutter speed at 10 seconds. Now, some of you are gonna ask me about focusing here. Remember I said I focused to infinity on the background? Well, I did not touch the focus at all because that building is about 10 or 12 meters away, it, probably even more than that, from the camera. Now I can tell you now that the infinity focus on this camera at 20 millimeters is about six to seven meters. So it's beyond that. But when I stop down the aperture to F5, that increases even further. So um, I don't need to refocus. And I, I can prove that by zooming in on the image. It's gonna be really, really sharp. So that's one of the other advantages of stopping down for the foreground shots. Now, remember, I need to shoot at f 2.2 f 2.8 fast aperture to get the stars to shine because they're, they're not very bright but with the lighting and the light painting on the foreground i can afford to stop there i could shoot this at f8 in fact i could shoot this at f16 i just need to put an awful lot of light into it and i've discovered that i don't see a whole lot of difference between f5 f8 f10 doesn't matter so for convenience i guess I like to shoot at f5. The other thing, and I've probably mentioned this, but I'll, I'll mention it again here. The other thing is, I don't really want to get any stars in these foreground shots because I've got to rub them out anyway. So by having a shorter shutter speed and an ISO that's, well, 500, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot less than uh, 6400, that's for sure. I can easily rub those stars out and blend all those foreground shots in. And when it all comes together with the lighting from all the different angles, Fantastic.
Okay, now one of the things that I really do want to illustrate here is how to light these stone walls on buildings like this. Now they are absolutely gorgeous and that is the character of these old structures. Now, I'm going to light this from an angle. Let me illustrate like this. When I put my light here, you can see the shape and the texture of the stonework. So I'm on a, a fairly extreme angle. If I bring my light around to the same angle as where the camera is, something like that, then of course it's flat and lifeless. We don't want flat and lifeless light painting. We want something that looks beautiful and the light falls off from one side to the other. That's what you get by lighting on extreme angles. So of course when I'm shooting Orion here, I'm facing towards the northeast. Now, after taking that shot with the 20 mil lens, I've still had it on the camera of course, I just turned around to look down towards the southeast and I saw a great silhouette of the building. So I just went to the northern side of the building, put a really low level light on both ends. So the Z96 is on their lowest power and even so I still offset them so they weren't directly on the building. So it's just a little bit of light but I did put the orange gels on because I wanted to warm this shot up considerably. Anyway, the thing I really liked about it was there's a little bit of light pollution down there, but not a massive amount, but it was enough to silhouette the building quite nicely. And there's a tree over there which was also silhouetted against the, the sky. And the other thing is uh, the little bit of wispy cloud low down on the southern horizon. Um, and once again, it's a composition that doesn't include the Milky Way core at all, but it still looks pretty good. And I was really happy with the look of this shot. Okay, so what I've done here is I've set up my Skywatcher Star Adventurer to shoot the constellation of Orion. Now I've fitted the 50mm f 1.8s lens to the Z6. Now the intention I have here is to shoot multiple exposures, blend them together. I'll use Sequator for that. So I'm shooting at f 2.8, ISO 1600 and I'm shooting 30 second shutter speeds. I shot 12 of those and I'm going to blend them as I said and what I'm going to do is do a focal length blend. So in other words I'm going to use the foreground shots for the 20mm and the sky background shots with the 50mm and see how that goes. Now I did try to line up the 50mm for the foreground but I just couldn't get it in. It was just, I'd have to get way back in the paddock over there and it just wouldn't frame up. So that's why I decided to go with the 20 mil foreground, 50 mil background. Speaking of background, have a look down there. That's Mars. Mars is setting down there in the western sky here. So it's getting awfully late. Boy, I, I dread to think what time it actually is because I've been out here for so many hours. But I'm wrapped in this. Uh, I'm fighting a little bit against the, the moon that's rising up over there low down and it's starting to make the sky go blue and it's going to blow out a little bit so I've increased my white balance to 5500 Kelvin. Now that's pretty much daylight white balance which I don't normally use at night time unless there's a moon in the sky. See how it goes but I'm wrapped with what I'm seeing on the back of the screen. Well, there you go. 
have a look at that. We've got the moon rising up there behind the old building. This is a bit of a deja vu moment for me because it seems to be happening every time I go out these days. Uh, but gee, it looks good over there. It doesn't help my photography, of course, but visually it looks fantastic. Anyway, look, I'm delighted with the images that I've got here tonight and none of them featuring the Milky Way core. And of course, that is the whole purpose of these episodes. Now, what I'm going to try and do is squeeze some of these episodes in between my regular weekly videos. So if I can do that, I need to find the space and the time. But if I can, you'll see a few more videos from me over the Christmas period into January. And in Australia here, it's summertime. So we've got shorter nights, but they're still dark all night. So we've got plenty of hours of darkness, and so therefore I'll have plenty of time to get out. And uh, anyway, this has been good out here tonight, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, love you to subscribe to the channel. Comments down below. I love reading the comments, and uh, we can have a chat about any of the techniques and the compositions that we shot tonight. All right, I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. <music>